Hi, today I'm going to show you how you can create a Toast notification system in your Waste web app that will notify the user about all the different actions that they are performing within their web app. So yeah, let me show you how to build this. It is really super simple and all we need for this are just two actions. So let's go to Webflow and let's just go through the basic HTML setup real quick. So we have the toast holder, which is just a div block in here that will just have um, the flex applied to that. Um, and we just stack it on top of each other. And then we have the template item in here. And the template item will have the waste attribute of toast item applied to it so that we can render it dynamically and as you can see it will stack on top of each other this is what waste will be doing in here boom and let's stack this back and then we have waste cloak applied to that so you don't need to do true i'm just doing this because i i think it's it doesn't look that great if you just have it empty but you can just do it empty you can do however you want i just put two in true true in there and yeah, we have with cloak, so we avoid the content flashing. And then I just have the text field in here as well, where I'm just going to put the waist attribute of toast message in there so that we can display the dynamic toast message. So when the user copies it, it says you copied this, or when the user downloads it, it says you download this. So based on whatever the action the user is doing, they will get a customized message. And that's where we're going to have this field also dynamic, but you could have that static as well if you just want to say, hey, you just did something. Maybe not, you want to have a good user experience, but it is possible. So let's actually add something in here so I can show you what's going on. So you can see the blue item in here, this one down here, um, this is the template item. So first of all, we have to render a list from a variable. So we have this variable in here, toast lock. And this is a computed variable and we have some code in here. So all this code is doing, it's saying if the toast lock is, is null, so when it loads, it's just nothing, right? We're going to set this as an empty array so we can push items in there. And if there's already something pushed into it, we're going um, to filter out the ones that are expired. And actually, this is not required anymore. Um, I forgot to update this because we already have a computed variable that does that job for us utilizing the power of computed variables because you can run complete uh, code functions in them. So actually we don't need that. We just need to set return to an empty array so that when this loads and it's set on the page, this variable, we can push uh, objects in this array and have it computed so it's in real time and then we have our function that will, I will go back on that later, but just so that you know, we have another variable doing a calculation the whole time using a set interval. So let's go back in here. Um, so we render this from this array, which is empty. But the moment I perform whatever action in here, I will log it to this variable. You can see on top in here and it will be shown in here and this is where we will be rendering the list from and we're also going to apply the v iterator in here so it's a render list in with it's very simple so then we're going to stack the template items on top of each other so we have this one superior template item and if i re-click this multiple times it will just stack them on top of each other using the render list action and you can see the blue uh outlined one would be the template item which is now not anymore on the DOM. It's not anymore on the canvas. So, and then of course we need to render the message. So whenever we have something pushed in here, we will get a message. And how this is going to get in there, I will be showing that to you in a second, but I just want to give the basic structure here. So every item in here has the toast ID, which is a UUID that's generated. This is how we're going to reference this. Um, but we also have a price. We have a, oh, no, not I mixed up the lines. Um, I gotta be quick here. So we have an expiration. This is a timestamp. This is uh, about five seconds in the future. So we're going to look into this computed variable, which I just showed you. We're going to look 
is this timestamp in the past? And if yes, we're going to remove it from the other variable, um, where this is the variable where we will be pushing all our objects in that will contain the log of everything. So we're saying, oh, that is actually expired. Let's remove it from this uh, variable. And this is how we're going to get the effect that we're going to get have those added in here. But after some time, after those notifications expire, they just fade away. They just pop away. They just get removed from it because they're not current anymore for our system. And this is not just something we do on the front end. This is a whole complete thing we store into a variable so that you are also able, if you need to, to send this to your back end as well. Um, if you want to keep any um, uh, version history or something like this, when you want to allow the users to revert back to backups, very handy for that. That's why it's built that way. So now you know how we're going to render the list, how we're going to show this list that it is with a variable. And let's look into the computed variables. So we have this code for the computed variable. It's a lot of code, but you don't need to get scared by this. All this is doing, it's saying whenever I put something in here, it has this timestamp, you see? And if this timestamp is in the past, it will remove those from this variable, you see? I added those in here, and now we have this set for five seconds in the future. And after it, the future is now the past, so meaning we just, the five seconds just expired, we're going to remove this from this variable, and therefore we can add things to the uh, toast notifications but after some time, as you can see, they remove because they are expired based on the timestamp in our computed variable. And now let's actually look into how we're going to add those things. So we have, in this case, and this may be different in your app, I'm just basing this on this clonable here. Your app may have um, a save button or something like this, but here's the principle. So let's take, for example, the copy button as an example, and it's the same principle for everything. So what we want to do here is, in this case, we're copying something to our clipboard, but we also want to have this extra function to show the toast mes message that we copied this to our clipboard. So let's go into this. I copy this to my clipboard. I have the toast message that studio form, by the way, the best form in Webflow and ways that is available to you, check it out. Um, that that was this amazing product was copied to my clipboard. I want to copy that at least 20 times because it's such an amazing thing. Uh, but yeah, let's just go and how this technical stuff works. By the way, way better than formally. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's look into this. So it's so at the beginning here, and this is very important because sometimes we're deleting records. So sometimes if you work with a delete function like this, you want to log it before the structure of your array changes. So when I click in here, it will delete it, right? Uh, so delete, it will say um, UI Pro was deleted. We don't see UI Pro in here. So we cannot, when we go, for example, with a delete function, for example, we cannot have this, which will define the clicked um, name, which we will display in the message because we'll be saying the name, we cannot have this all on the bottom down here over return because it will get the name for the array after it was updated and the item was removed. So before we do your existing business logic, we need to put a function up here that will define the product name if or whatever name you want to reference your notification to. So this can be when you say studio form was deleted. You want to define the first thing before you do your existing logic, you want to define the name or the identifier of what the user clicked on so you can reference it back later on after you did potentially your delete actions that you not, does, don't say if studio form was deleted, you know what? Um, WIST was deleted because now this is in place of studio form, right? You want to say, no, you clicked on studio form. So based on this click action, we reference it to studio form a uh, WIST is now the item that used to be studio form, but the person clicked on studio form, so we're going to show the message stu studio form was deleted. So this is why we're going to do this on top. But what we're going to do here is we're just going to use the vIterator and the dot name operation to go into our uh, table variable to get the name. Uh, and that's it. And then we just have our existing business logic in here, our existing function in JavaScript, 
We just keep it as it is. And now here's where the toast function starts. So first we have to define the toast message. So we do const toast message and we're going to create an object in here like this. And we're going to start the object with toast ID. Um, and then we set this dot as crypto dot random UUID. We do the function. This will create a random UUID directly in WIST. And then we're going to set the expiration. We do new date as a function. We do get time. We get the current timestamp. And then we do plus five seconds. And now we have the timestamp for the future in five seconds, which after the future came five seconds ago, if this is now in the past, we just kick it off the variable as you saw. So this is how we're going to do that. And now we're going to set the message. So in this case, we're referencing this back to product name, which we defined up here, which was got, which was taken from the uh, iteration we clicked on. So if I click on studio form, for example, uh, let's click on here. I delete studio form, right? It will show me the message for studio form. But now Figma is in place of studio form. So if I were to have any potential action um, under my business logic that would manipulate anything on the variable or with the database, I would potentially get a wrong result. I would say, you know what, you deleted Figma, but in reality, the person deleted studio form. So we have to do this before we execute our existing function to make sure that we're going to show the user um, the message based on the result the user clicked on and not based on the result that is now in place uh, in the position where the user used to click on. Very important. And yeah, then we're going to define the message. We're going to use a plus and just put in a string, make sure to have a space in here, uh, was successful copied. So product name was successful copied and that will be replaced by studio form, for example, was successfully copied. And then we're just going to push this to our toast lock array, this one. So we're going to do toast lock dot push and then we're going to define this message, which we defined in this object in here. And if we were to run this, we would see yeah, we have that in here and we run this function in the computed variable now that you see it will be deleted. And this is what the computed variable is doing in here. As you can see, this computed variable, what it is doing, it's a lot of code, but I just have some explanations in here. But what it is doing basically, it's going to set an interval. It's going to loop over this, over this array, uh, over this, yeah, over this array in the variable. And it will say, you know what? You set this back then, this was now for you and you set this for five seconds in the future. But now this future became past. And the moment this future became past, I'm going to kick this off because we don't care about the past. And this is what this code is doing and it's doing it really good. So as you can see, when I click on here, it's going to push this now to my variable and it's going to push this one too. And now this other record, which you saw just disappeared and this one will disappear now too was in the past, so the future timestamp for five seconds in the future happened to be at some point in time the past, and since it was at some point of, it, of time the past, this condition went to true and therefore it kicked it off the variable. Uh, this is a lot of logic, it's a lot of variables, it's a lot of com uh, computed variables, it's a lot of code going on in here. Uh, but this is the general principle of how you're going to build a Toast notification system so that your user can see the latest changes they did um, in their user interface. And you can even have this variable on change sent to your backend. So if they were to reload the page, they would continue the progress or maybe they could even revert back to changes. You can maybe even send a copy of the current record that the user, for example, deleted in this log and then you can recover data. This is a really, really, really amazing way to make amazing user experiences that don't just fascinate from a UI, but also from a UX standpoint to really go the extra mile for your project. And I really hope that this helps you. And yeah, there will be even probably a better version of this coming out soon because we have the slide animation, but we sadly don't have a fade animation yet. It's kind of 
just disappears. So I'm going to work on that. And we even have uh, people from the community helping me on that. So I will shout out to them once we got that working as well in the next video in the V2. But I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who has been helping me out, also from the FinSuite and the WIS team. And yeah, I really appreciate all your support. I really appreciate that. I hope that you're going to build a lot of amazing stuff with this. And I can't wait to see what you're going to share uh, with me in the comments. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. I'm always super happy to help. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that. And see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.